Hey, what's up everyone? In this lesson, let's learn some tips and techniques for converting our image's color to black and white. So inside of Photo Raw here, my first tip for converting images to black and white is to use the develop tab. It's an often overlooked method for converting your image to black and white and desaturating, but you can get a whole lot of black and white look and style within this tone and color pane of Photo Raw. So inside of the tone and color pane, just to desaturate the image and convert our image to black and white, we'll just head to the color section here and we'll lower the saturation. And, you know, voila, we have a black and white photograph, but you're probably thinking, well, yeah, you know, there's no color in the scene, but it lacks that sort of pop and that oomph that we want in a desaturated black and white photograph. Well, what we can do here to make things pop and ensure that things are looking the way we want them is we can head up into this tone section and we can modify our exposure and contrast and things like that to really make our image look as if it's that nice dramatic black and white edit. So the first thing I want to mention here for modifying and adjusting that black and white look is the camera profile menu. If you're editing a raw image file, you can use this camera profile menu to emulate these different looks within your photograph. And you can see right out of the gate, they can do a whole lot to modify your black and white conversion. So for this scene, I'm just gonna stick with on one standard here. And let's head down into our tone section. In the tone section, there's three sliders that I would modify to just sort of immediately bring some oomph and some detail and some pop to your scene. The first slider that I would modify and really sort of think about when you're editing black and white images is the contrast slider. Contrast plays a huge role in sort of that, you know, elegant black and white and high contrast, you know, black and white look that you see that's so popular. And so if you want that sort of, you know, highly detailed sort of moody dramatic black and white look increase the contrast a bit so let's just increase this contrast slider and you can see right out of the gate we're bringing in a little bit more mood we're adding in true blacks a little bit of true white and well not true black and true white but we're adding in blacks and we're adding in whites and that's increasing the detail and sort of the overall texture within the photograph you can see if I go back to just zero, you can see how much that it affects the out outcome of our black and white conversion. One thing that you may want to pay attention to when you're modifying the contrast slider is your true whites and your true blacks. So if you're thinking you're getting things a little bit too dark or things are a little bit too bright, Hold down your J key on your keyboard, and as you pull up on your contrast, you can see if you get any true black or true white. With blue overlays, it's showing me any true black without any detail within my scene. And if I get any red overlays, that's showing me true white without any detail. So these two indicators within Photo Rock can be really helpful for making sure certain areas within your scene aren't blown out or they're underexposed. So we talked about the contrast slider and how it can dramatically modify that black and white conversion within the develop tab. Let's talk about the other two sliders that I think are really important when it comes to modifying your black and white look. The sliders I'm talking about are the exposure slider and the white slider. I think I use these two sliders and the contrast slider the most when I'm editing black and white photos or I'm converting my images to black and white. And I think they're really, really helpful in just, again, making a quick and easy black and white conversion inside of the develop tab. So with exposure and with whites, I think they work sort of hand in hand. So what I'm gonna do here to just increase the contrast and make things a little bit more moody is I'm actually going to lower the exposure down about I don't know, almost two stops, quite a bit. 
So things are really dark now. You know, we've lowered the exposure and, you know, things are a little bit um, underexposed in quite a few areas. And so whenever I'm pulling back on the exposure, and this is, you know, within any edit, it doesn't have to be a black and white conversion, but whenever I'm lowering the exposure, I'm always going into my whites and I'm pulling up on the whites just a little bit to ensure that things aren't flat and that things are detailed. Now, you may not want to pull up on the whites if you know, you're know you recovering an entire area of blown out true whites within your scene. But you know, in this instance, when we don't have a whole lot of blown out areas within our scene and we're just dealing with you know, sort of a, an evenly exposed image here, giving your scene a little bit of white is going to be super helpful in ensuring that the scene doesn't look flat. So for example, I've pulled back on the exposure about negative two stops here, so really quite dark. We can still see some of these areas within the scene, but we need to bring out some of the light within the photo. So to do that, we're just gonna pull up on our white slider. And again, I'm gonna hold down the J key on my keyboard just to ensure I don't get too bright within the photo. But you can see, I can pull up quite a bit on that slider. And I'm, got, I'm not getting any true white within my photograph, and it's giving me that brightness that I need in these areas of texture and detail within the rocks. And that's just with those two sliders, the exposure and the white slider. So let me just hit the backslash key on my keyboard. And I feel like it really added in a little bit more mood and a little bit more drama into the scene just to ensure that we didn't have, you know, just our original sort of, you know, a little bit dull, a little bit flat exposure here. I think by removing some of that exposure and adding in some of those whites, it really helped to elevate the look of our black and white scene. Now let me just add in some contrast here. Actually, I think that look with the exposure pulled back and the whites looked a little bit better. So I'm just going to leave that there with that exposure modification and our whites adjustment. Remember, the exposure, contrast, and white slider are really awesome sliders for just getting your black and white conversion to a starting point. You know, you can always go into the effects tab and the local tab after that and sort of modify and fine tune. But I think those three sliders are really great for just getting your black and white image um, out of the gate and up and running. And just want to mention, that's not to say that you shouldn't use these other sliders in here, you know, the, your, your highlights, midtones, shadows, and even the black slider. But I've found that, you know, if you're just looking for a quick and easy black and white conversion, those three sliders can really help um, you achieve that sort of look there. So another slider or a couple sliders that I wanted to mention here within the tone and color section are the structure slider and the haze slider. So the structure slider is going to increase the, the micro contrast and the smaller details within the scene. So if I wanna add in a little bit more texture and detail into these rocks, I can pull up on the structure slider there and you can see it's just giving those tiny bits of texture a little bit more pop to them. Now keep in mind that by modifying any of these sliders inside of tone and color, you're adjusting the image as a whole. Um, we'll get into selectively adjusting later on in the lesson, but just keep in mind that if you're adjusting things in the tone and color pane, you're going to be modifying the image in its entirety. But no worries if you're modifying an image like this or something similar where you're not really too worried about many of the specific areas in the image and you can sort of just adjust the image in its entirety. So let's just give the image a little bit of structure there just to make those smaller details pop. And then the other slider I wanted to discuss was this haze slider. What I like to use the haze slider is for incorporating a little bit of glow into the scene. So to incorporate glow, I can pull up on the haze slider to the right. And you can see it brings in just a little bit of softness into the scene. Now, 
by bringing up the haze slider, you're going to br you're going to be bringing up the brightness within the photograph. So keep in mind that by pulling up on this haze slider here, I would recommend using the J key on your keyboard just to ensure that you don't reach any true white within your photograph. So just sort of a little hazy glow, you can achieve that with just that haze slider there. Now, if you're looking to do the opposite within your scene, you can actually pull back on the haze slider to remove any haze and increase the sort of overall contrast within the photograph. So I think I'll just leave it as it was. And that is the tone section there. So we've desaturated the image and then we've gone in and sort of modified the look by just adjusting these different sliders there. But let's talk about how we can modify the look of our scene with the temperature slider. So even though we've converted the image to black and white and we've desaturated things, we can still adjust the look of the scene by modifying colors. And we'll get more into that later on in the lesson. But I wanted to mention this temperature slider just for adjusting the brightness of specific areas of your photograph. So with our temperature slider here, let me just convert this to Kelvin first, just to ensure that we're looking at this in degrees there. And what the temperature slider can do for you if you're looking to modify your black and white conversion in the develop tab is it can adjust the look of specific colored areas within your photograph. So if we just hit the backslash key on our keyboard to view our original here, we mainly have blue in our background and then some orange, red, yellow, maybe some green, you know, colors within our rocky sections. So as we adjust our temperature slider here, it's going to incorporate cooler tones into different areas of the scene. And you can see if we modify that temperature, it will slightly adjust how that black and white look appears on different sections of the photograph. And it is you know, quite subtle, but if you are dealing with different images with different colors and things like that, you know, there could be a quite a lot of difference on how it looks with the temperature. So just something to think about when you're converting your image to black and white inside of develop, this temperature slider can affect the overall look of that black and white conversion. So let's just hit the backslash key on our keyboard. We'll view the original photograph here. And this was just a nice, you know, quick and easy black and white conversion, desaturating. And then we lowered the exposure to, you know, I guess dim things down a bit while at the same time, we pulled up on our white slider to increase that general overall contrast in the photograph and give our scene a little bit more oomph and a little bit more pop. We also use the structure slider here to fine tune that micro contrast and that detail. So let's just turn off the structure, turn off the whites, and we'll turn off our exposure. And then if we go back to the modifiers here, you can see that you can really fine tune and adjust the black and white conversion and the overall look of that black and white conversion inside of the develop tab. And don't forget about these camera profile options here. Really awesome for adjusting the black and white look within your scene. So that was the develop tab. Let's jump into my next tip for converting your images to black and white inside of On One Photo Raw. My next tip for converting your image to black and white inside of On One Photo Raw is to use the black and white filter inside of the effects tab. So if we head in to the effects tab from our develop tab here and we add a filter, let's add the tried and true black and white filter, probably the most common way to convert your image to black and white. Inside the black and white filter here, we have a ton of different options we can use to modify our black and white look. If you're not really sure where to go with the black and white conversion or what sort of style you're going for, I would recommend sort of thumbing through these 
different conversion methods, and also checking out this more menu here because there's a lot of awesome black and white looks that are built directly into the filter itself. Now with black and whites, because you know they are such a fun way to edit your images, if you're looking to save a particular style that you've created by modifying this filter, you can easily save a style there and then you can quickly use that anytime you open up that filter. So within this black and white filter here, let's just modify the filter to our taste manually. Inside of this conversion section here, we have two different options. We have color response and we have channel mixer. Let's first talk about color response. Within color response, this is going to modify the brightness of specific colors by adjusting those specific colors with these different sliders here. So let's just turn off this black and white filter for now. In our scene, we sort of have three layers of colors. Our green foreground, our red middle ground with the barn, and then our blue background sky. So if we go into our color response section here, if we wanna brighten our red barn, for example, we can pull up on that red slider there and you can see it brightens up that red color within the barn. Same thing with the greens. If we want to darken those greens up in our foreground there, we can darken them with that green slider. And there's also quite a few yellows in that foreground as well, so we can darken up those yellows as well. But you can see that by modifying those specific colors within our scene, it's dramatically affecting that black and white outcome. And so this is where you can really modify and adjust those specific areas and colors within your photo is by using these different sliders here inside of black and white. If we want to darken up the sky, we can pull back on that blue and you can see we can really dim down that blue back there and give it a little bit more oomph and a little bit more contrast. Now, if we switch this conversion to channel mixer, it is converting your image to black and white a little bit differently. With this filter here, this is going to emulate filters that you would place over your lens. So for example, if you were placing a red photo filter on your lens, you would want to pull up on this red or pull over on the slider here over to the red color there, and that's going to emulate a red photo filter. Now, when it comes to the filters, it's going to brighten the color as you, or it's going to brighten the color that you have preferred on this slider here. So for example, I've pulled it all the way to red. If I pull this to the right, it's darkening that red up because it's, it's going to a cooler color. If I pull this back to red, you can see it's brightening up that red color. Same thing with the blues. So if I want a brighter blue, I'll pull this filter over to the blue within the scene, or sorry, the blue within this filter slider there. And you can see it brightens up the blues, but it darkens up the other colors, specifically the red and those yellows and mainly those warm colors within the photograph. If I want to brighten up those yellows, I could pull that filter slider over that yellow color there. So with the filter slider, again, if you want to brighten up a specific color within your black and white within this channel mixer, just pull this filter slider over to that color that you want to brighten. So in this instance, I want to brighten up those greens and those sort of yellows. So we'll just pull that sort of to that green yellow section of our filter slider and you can see it's brightened those up, it's darkened up our red barn, and we have a little bit of contrast within the sky still. I typically prefer using this color response method, especially if I'm modifying an image with sort of really specific colors such as this one. So 
I'm just going to reset this here. Let's, let's darken our reds a little bit. We'll darken our foreground. And then we'll darken our sky quite a bit there. Maybe darken up our reds quite a whole lot. Perfect. So there's a couple different areas that I also wanted to talk about inside of the black and white filter. So not only can you convert quickly to black and white and you can really modify quite a bit of the look of that black and white within this conversion section here, but you can modify the tone toner to add in a little bit of color tint and you can also modify the film grain to give it a little bit of grainy uh, graininess and some film grain. So let's head into this tone section here. I'm just going to open up the tone section and remember that method that I was using earlier with the exposure and the contrast and the whites, you can do the same things within this tone section really easily. And you can of course modify all of those other different tone sliders as well. So let's do that sort of same method. Let's just pull back on the brightness quite a bit. And then let's just pull up on the whites while also holding down the J key on the keyboard there. So I'm just going to reach true white and I probably won't pull it back that much. But you can see by modifying, you know, our tone section here, we can again, just make sure that black and white conversion is exactly how we want it to look within this specific photograph. If you wanted a little bit brighter of a shadow tone within your scene, you could modify those darker tones there. Let's actually pull back on our black slider to give our image some true black within the photograph, or at least a little bit of true black within the scene, just to make it a little bit more dramatic. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. Maybe let's just leave it at around, yeah, we'll just leave it. I think it looked fine as it was. But, you know, again, you can just see that, you know, fine tuning this tone section and even that tone section in develop, it can really adjust the black and white outcome of your edit. Now, another slider in here that's really handy is the detail slider. Remember that structure slider inside of develop, it's basically the same slider, but inside of this black and white filter. So let's increase that structure or detail or some, sometimes it's called clarity. They're all basically the same thing. And you can see by pulling back on the detail, I can add in a little bit of a sort of a soft haze within the scene there. But if I pull back too much, it gets a little crazy. So with this detail slider, it's really nice for adding in some nice micro contrast and some detail within the scene. And also if you want maybe just a little bit of sort of a soft haze, you could pull back on the detail a little bit. But let's just pull up on that detail slider to give it a little bit more detail and some micro contrast right about there looks nice. And then let's head into the toner section of our black and white filter. I know it's, there's so many features in this black and white filter. That's why it's probably, you know, the most commonly used method for converting to black and white instead of photo raw. So in the toner section, we can give our image a, a little bit of a, a color tone or sort of a color grading look, if you will. If we open up this type section or the type menu here, we have all of these different color tone types that we can apply to our scene. Some of my favorites are these top categories where they're a little bit warmer and a little bit darker, especially these coffee ones and these black tea options are really awesome for just giving it a little bit of color, a little bit of tone. And these selenium ones are also really great as well. But you know, there's all of these other options to modify within your scene. But again, these top warmer ones and then these selenium ones are definitely my favorites for bringing in a little bit of color tone to your black and white conversion. Now, just like with split toning, you can modify the highlights and the shadows independently of one another. So if you're looking to give your highlights a different color tone than your shadows, you can do that within this section here. So let's just, for example, give our highlights a little bit more of a warm tint and we'll give our shadows more of a cool tint. So I'm just going to go into my highlight color here and we'll just make it 
sort of an orange color. And let's pull up on the amount so that we can give those highlights some warmth. Maybe a little bit too much there, but we'll get it a little bit dramatic just because it is a demo. Now we pulled up on the amount there. We can of course adjust the hue here to adjust the actual color itself that we're modifying. But let me go back there to that orange slider. But you can also adjust the balance here. And this is going to modify sort of the balance between your highlights and your shadow adjustments. So with the shadows here, let's make it again sort of a, oops, that's way too much, but we'll just bring it to this blue color here. And my amount is pulled up quite a bit here, so let's pull back on that to sort of match the hue amount, maybe around 17 though. And then let's fine tune that balance again. So if we wanted a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer within those different sections, depending on our highlights and our shadow colors, we can sort of fine tune that balance there. So let's just turn off the toner there. And let's close up our toner section here and let's actually talk about the film grain section of the scene. So within our black and white filter, there's not only tone, toner that you can use, tone, there's not only tone and toner um, that you can use to modify your black and white conversion, but you also have film grain in here to give your image a little bit of grain. So let's go into our film option here and we can modify the film that we're using. If you're looking for a lot of grain, use a film with a higher number. So for example, this 3200 option, if I zoom in, you can see it brings in quite a bit of graininess into the photograph. The amount slider is going to adjust the strength of sort of the opacity of that film grain that's overlaid onto your scene. And then the size is going to adjust the size of the film grain. So if you want it really, really quite grainy, you can pull up on both those sliders there and give your image, you know, a quite a vintage vibe there with that film grain. Let me just switch this up here to one of these other black and white conversions. And we'll just use that. Ooh, fade to black option. So you can see in this option here, they lowered the opacity or in this preset rather, the opacity is lowered up top here down to about negative 10. So it's 90 there. So it's not applying the black and white all the way. And I think that does a really nice job for this particular photo, just to bring out some of that red that's in that barn there. So that's the black and white filter. Remember there's a whole lot going on in the black and white filter from the conversion menu here. We have color response, which will adjust the individual colors brightness within your scene. We have channel mixer, which is going to emulate photo filters that are placed onto the end of your lens. And with the channel mixer, if you want to brighten a specific color, target that color within that filter slider. So within this filter slider here, if you're wanting to brighten up, the reds pull all over onto the filter to place the button onto the red section. Same thing with the blues. You know, if you want brighter blues, target those blues with that slider there. We also have the tone section, which you can use to modify the overall tone of your scene. Remember the brightness, contrast, and white sliders are really awesome for again, just getting your black and white image modified how you want it to look. The detail slider is great for giving your image a little bit of micro contrast and detail. We then have toner, which is going to give your image some split toning within the highlights and the shadows if you want to give your image some, some color toning. 
And then we have film grain, which is going to incorporate a little bit of graininess and noise into the scene. So that is the black and white filter, my second tip for incorporating a black and white look into your scene. Let's take a look at my next tip for black and white conversions inside of Photo Raw. My next tip for converting your images to black and white sort of goes hand in hand with the last tip that we talked about, but it is targeting the brightness of specific colors within your scene to adjust that black and white conversion. And we talked a little bit about this with the color response method in black and white, but there's a couple other ways that you can do it inside of Photo Raw, and there's another way that you can do it actually inside of the black and white filter. So to target specific colors and their brightness, let's go into the effects tab, let's add a filter, and we'll add that handy black and white filter. With our black and white filter here, let's make sure we're in the color response conversion method. And inside the color response conversion method, we have this little color dropper here with this little brightness uh, icon next to it. If we select this, this will pull up a little plus icon. We can hover over the scene and we can choose specific colors and we can modify the brightness of them by just dropping it down and then moving the your mouse to the left or to the right. And you can see I'm targeting just those specific reds within the scene with that color dropper there. So same thing, you know, with our blues, if we wanted them a little bit darker there, pull those to the left. And then I think the foreground looks good. We could maybe grab the yellows there and pull back on those just a little bit. But you can see by clicking and dropping on specific colors and then dragging to the left or the right, we can target those specific colors within our scene. Now let me just reset this here and let me show you another way that you can modify the brightness of the colors to adjust the black and white conversion. So let's add a filter here, and we're going to add the color adjustment filter. Now, whenever you're using a color modifier other than the black and white filter itself, remember to drag that color adjustment underneath your black and white filter in the filter stack so that you have the black and white on top, because if you modify the color and it's on top of the black and white filter in the stack, it's not going to be able to adjust any color because you're essentially modifying a black and white image. So I've just placed that color adjustment filter underneath my black and white filter inside of the filter stack to ensure that I'm modifying the color and then it's getting converted to black and white. And so inside of the color adjustment filter, we have sort of a similar setup to the black and white filter color response section. But instead of just modifying the brightness of each individual color sort of in a default way, we can now adjust the range of that color that we're looking for, the hue, the saturation, and the brightness of those specific colors in our black and white conversion. So let's say for example, red, we want to modify the reds within our scene. I've selected those red colors in my color adjustment, and we can modify the brightness of them really easily. And what we can't do in the black and white filter, we can easily do inside of the color adjustment filter when it comes to you know, fine tuning that range or the saturation or whatever it may be, because we have these different sliders that we can use. So let's say we want more of those reds modified, we can increase that range, or let's say we want less of the reds, we can lower that range back. And similar to that color dropper in the black and white filter, you can do the same thing with the color adjustment filter. So if we select the dropper there, we can target, let's say for example, the blues, and oops, we're adjusting the hue. Um, one thing to keep in mind with this color dropper that I just forgot to do is that you wanna modify this menu first so for example, we typically want to modify the brightness of a color whenever we're converting it to black and white. So let's choose adjust brightness there. And then we can click on this dropper and then it's the exact same method as we just did inside of the color, or sorry, 
It's the exact same method we just did inside of the black and white filter. We just hover over a specific color. Let's say for example, blues in the sky. We'll drop it down and then we can modify the brightness of those specific colors within the photograph there. And you can see if I turn this off and on, it's really affecting the overall look of that black and white edit. Now another way you can do it, and it's pretty similar to the color adjustment filter, but if you add a filter and you add the color enhancer filter, it has very similar controls as the color adjustment filter. So let's again drag that color enhancer filter or color adjustment filter, whatever it may be, below the black and white filter so that we can again adjust the color and then get it converted to black and white. And what I like about the color enhancer filter is that it has this color range section very similar to the color adjustment filter, but you can also modify the temperature up here as well. So if you're looking to adjust the temperature as well as these different color ranges, You can do that just to fine tune, again, how those colors are interpreted within that black and white conversion. But again, you can see it's just by modifying those colors individually, you can really fine tune and adjust the outcome of that black and white edit. So that's modifying the brightness of specific colors by using that targeted brightness tool inside of the black and white filter, and also by using the color adjustments and color enhancer filters. Remember that if you're looking to modify the conversion with the color enhancer or color adjustment filters, when you add them into the stack, remember to drag them below your black and white filter. so that you're modifying the color and then it's getting converted to black and white. Let's check out the next tip for converting images to black and white inside of On One Photo Raw. My next tip for converting your images to black and white inside of Photo Raw is to use various filters to achieve different styles of black and white conversions. So we of course talked about, you know, converting our image to black and white inside of the develop tab. And then we also talked about adding on a filter and using the black and white filter but there's other filters you can use to convert your image to black and white as well. So one of my all time favorite filters to convert my image to black and white and probably what I use 50% of the time other than the black and white filter is the LUTs filter. The LUTs filter, if you go into your category menu here and you choose black and white, houses a bunch of awesome black and white styles that you can use to convert your image to a monochromatic look. And the great thing about LUTs is you can always download and find amazing black and white LUTs that you can easily import and add on to your photographs. One thing that I love about the LUTs filter as well is that you can adjust the contrast. Remember contrast is huge when it comes to black and white. So if you're looking for a little bit more contrast in your black and white LUT there, you can just easily increase that contrast there with this slider. Another filter that I use all the time for black and white conversions is the channel mixer filter. In the channel mixer filter, it's an awesome filter if you're looking to convert your infrared black and white to a black and white infrared uh, edit, but you can also use it just for regular black and whites as well. So in this more menu, if I choose black and white blue filter or green or you know even infrared sometimes looks really epic within the scene, but we have red filter as well to give our scene a little bit more of a, a different black and white 
conversion. Now, one thing I wanna mention in this channel mixer filter that I think goes overlooked and it doesn't actually have to do with black and whites, but I just wanna mention it real quick. And I have been using it quite a bit lately just for sort of getting unique looks on my scene, but it's these four false color options. In these false color options, you can get really cool colors within the photograph that can easily add, you know, just a little bit more of a unique look into the image that you're trying to create. But just something real quick to mention, um, we'll get back to the black and white stuff, but in here, this channel mixer, really great option for converting to black and white and giving your scene a nice black and white conversion. Another filter that I use all the time for black and white conversions is this bleach bypass filter. Anytime you have a filter inside of Photo Raw that has a saturation slider that will modify the saturation of your scene, rather than modifying the saturation of the color tint, um, you can really get awesome black and white conversions. So in this case, the saturation slider here modifies the color of the actual photograph and not the color tint. And so we can really fine tune our black and white conversion here in this bleach bypass filter. So we've desaturated already, we've already converted it to black and white. Now we have these different sliders here that we can use to fine tune. We have brightness here if we want to give it that classic you know, high contrast look there. We have contrast to add in more contrast if we need it. And then amazing enough, we have detail as well. So if you're looking to give your scene a little bit more detail and micro contrast, you can do that there with that detail slider. Another thing that's handy in here is the color tint. So we talked about the toner inside of the black and white filter. You can do a similar look within this tint section here. So let's give it a little bit of a warm tint there. You can of course modify the color in there by selecting the color rectangle there. But let's just give it sort of a warm tint there by just pulling up on the amount. And you can see we've desaturated it, but we've also added in that nice sort of color tint to our black and white scene, just to give it a little bit more drama and a little bit more mood. Another filter that I like to add on to convert my images to black and white is the grunge filter. And it's very similar to the bleach bypass filter, except for the fact that we can use this glow section and the film grain section to add in a bit of a soft, hazy glow. And we can also add in some film grain. So remember, anytime we have this saturation slider that modifies the color within our scene and not the color tint of a filter, we can use it to convert our image to black and white. So let's just pull back on the saturation and there we go. We have a nice black and white conversion, but we can of course fine tune that by adjusting these different sliders. So you can see it's very similar to bleach bypass, but when we get to the bottom, we don't have that color tint section. Instead we have glow and film grain. So let's give it a nice, sort of soft glow there. And let's actually remove all of the detail or remove a little bit of that detail so it's not too detailed there. But you can see we can give it a nice subtle glow in the scene. And the cool thing about the glow within our grunge filter is that we can actually modify the blend mode for it. And one that I really like is soft light strong. It's going to give it a little bit more contrast but if you pull it up all the way, you get this sort of contrasted glow that looks really cool in some photographs, especially when you have, you know, just textures or patterns within the scene. And then we of course have this film grain section, film grain section here. And it's similar to the film grain in black and white. If you want some film grain, pull up on the amount and then size 
we'll bring in the size. Let me just zoom in so we can sort of see it there. And it's quite subtle there. Let's actually turn the glow off there. And we'll pull up on the size here. And there you go. You can kind of see it in those darker areas there. So you can see not as strong as black and white for adding in film grain, but when it comes to adjusting the saturate or adjusting, well, of course the saturation, uh, but if, when it comes to adjusting the brightness and the contrast and the detail, and also that glow, grunge is really great for that. Um, one quick filter I just wanted to mention, it's not an actual black and white conversion filter, but it is great for adding in film grain. So let me just add in black and white here. And let's add another filter and I'll add on film grain as a filter. With film grain, you can sort of fine tune the actual film grain specifically in just one filter. So this is helpful, you know, if you need to mask it away from a specific area, you can do that by just applying film grain as its own independent filter. So remember when it comes to film grain, the higher the number, the more grain you're going to get. So let's use that 3200 option and we'll pull up on that and you can see we can get a nice film grain look to the photograph. So those are my different filters or some of my favorite filters for incorporating a black and white look into your scene. Remember, we have bleach bypass, which is an awesome filter for converting to black and white because you can desaturate the color within the scene and you can also incorporate a color tint if you need to. We then had the channel mixer filter which is great in this more menu for bringing on black and white looks into your scene. And don't forget about these false colors if you're editing a, you know, a, a color edit, but these are really awesome for bringing in a creative look into your scene as well. But with the channel mixer filter, we have these black and white looks. The next filter that I really like to use for black and white conversions is the grunge filter. And I'm sort of just going in alphabetical order here. I know we didn't go in this order with the tip here, but remember in the grunge filter, really awesome for desaturating and then also adding in some glow. And you can also add in a bit of film grain as well. Next filter I really like to use, and remember I use this a lot of the time when I'm converting to black and white just because it's so easy and really powerful, but it's the LUTs filter. And if we go into our category here and we go to black and white, remember we have all of these awesome black and whites that we can use to convert our image. So those are different filters that you can use inside of the effects tab to convert your image to black and white. There are you know, probably some other ways to do it. There's a lot of different ways to desaturate your image, but those are some of my most commonly used ways or some typical ways that I go in and convert my images. Let's check out my next tip for converting images to black and white. My next tip for converting your images to black and white is to use different conversion methods on different areas of your photograph. So for example, our foreground and our background in our scene here, our sky and our foreground are differently exposed and they have different tones within them. So what we can do to modify them independently is we can use different conversion methods on both the sky and the foreground. So let's go into the effects tab. Let's add a filter and we'll add the black and white filter. Let's just rename this one sky. And we'll use the color response method and we'll darken up those blues considerably just to give it a little bit more contrast into the sky there. And we'll also go into the tone section, maybe pull back on the brightness a little bit, give it a little bit more contrast.
And I may pull back on that detail slider just a little bit and it sort of softens up the sky there. So now what I'm going to do is let's go into the top section here and let's go into the masking options. And within our mask here, we can see it's applied to the entirety of the photograph. But, but in this instance, we only want this applied to the sky section. So let's go into our mask AI menu here and let's choose the sky. You can see it's indicating to me with that blue overlay that the sky section is selected. So we've chosen that there. And by default, this is set to paint out. But if we go over here and choose paint in, it's going to take that section that we just chose, the sky section in this case, and it's going to apply that black and white filter to it. So we've created the mask for our sky. Let's now just copy that mask that we used for the sky. Let's add another black and white filter. We'll rename this one foreground. We'll go into the masking options. We'll paste that mask, but remember we need to invert it so that it's applied to our foreground. So now if we modify the different tones in this color response for our foreground, such as the yellows and the reds that make up the sand, you can see we're not fine tuning any of the sky. We're just modifying the foreground section there. And the great thing about this is in our tone section, we can fine tune the tone of our foreground versus our sky. And one of the things that I like to do in this instance, especially is incorporate detail. So we've added in sort of that soft glow, black and white to the top. We can now incorporate detail into our foreground section to bring in some of that micro contrast into the sand there. So if we turn off these different black and white filters here, we have our foreground conversion with a little bit more detail and I think a little bit more contrast as well. And then we have a little bit softer of a sky conversion that doesn't modify as much contrast and it has that slight blur because I lowered that detail slider. So this method is great when you're dealing with different foregrounds and backgrounds that need to be modified independently, but it's also great if you're looking to modify the saturation of your subject and background independently of one another. So let's jump into the next tip where we adjust the saturation of our black and white edit independently in different areas of a scene. My next tip for converting your images to black and white inside of Photo Raw is to selectively adjust the saturation of your black and white conversion in specific areas of your scene. And I like to use this method of black and white conversion on portraits quite a bit. It's super fun to use this to completely desaturate a background and then leave maybe a little bit of color on the subject just to ensure that you know whatever color is in the scene does pop out a little bit within the photograph. So let's go into the effects tab here. We'll add a filter and we'll add handy dandy black and white filter. And let's use our more menu and choose one of my favorite presets, deep blacks. And even, you know, as a complete black and white photograph, this looks really nice, but sometimes we may want to bring in just a little bit of color into maybe our subject's face or their attire, or, you know, if you're not photographing a person, maybe a, an environment or a scene, you may want to just give whatever subject you have a little bit of saturation. And so if we turn off this black and white filter, I see she has this, I think it's a cheetah print jacket on. And so it can be a little bit distracting in that orange color back there, but I really love this warm color on her face and also in the skin here underneath the fishnets. So let's turn this back on, but let's remove some of this black and white look from the person's face and also her hands. So to do that, let's go into the masking options and we'll go into our mask AI menu here. Let's choose people. 
And because our default mode is set to paint out, let's choose apply to effectively paint that away from the person's face there. And already, you know, we're really focused in on the color within the face and in the hands. And I think by desaturating the background behind the portrait, it just really makes this area shine and stand out. Now, one thing you can do to sort of fine tune this is if you go into your masking options, typically with an AI mask, we're going to have pretty, you know, harsh edges within the scene here. And if we're modifying different adjustments, we may just get a little bit of crispiness on the edge. So what you can do to fine tune this is you can feather it a little bit and that will soften up that edge there. Now you probably don't want it too feathered because it's going to then bleed into different sections of the scene, but just, you know, a little bit of feathering can help to soften up those edges there. Another tip here when you're selectively adjusting the saturation of your black and white conversion is this density slider here. With this density slider, this is going to incorporate that black and white look into those areas that we're protecting. So if we want a little bit of that black and white look back into her face and her hands there, we can use this density slider to bring a little bit of that back. And you can of course use this on, you know, really anything. It doesn't have to be a portrait. It could be, you know, again, an environment with different cars that are different colors or, you know, various things that need just a little bit of saturation to make them stand out. And I think by desaturating the background here, we're a lot more focused on the color of her skin rather than the color of the shirt that she's wearing. And another thing that I like to use with my, you know, selective saturation, you could call it, is a vignette. So if we add a filter here just to sort of remove the background a little bit, if you will, or at least remove it as a distraction, you can use a vignette filter. And I really love the big softy preset to just give a soft vignette to the photograph. Remember, remember, uh, remember that you can use this button here. If you select this, you can position the vignette in different spots of your photo. So that's how to use selective saturation to modify different areas of your photograph. Let's jump into the next tip. My next tip for modifying and converting your images to black and white is to leave one single color saturated and desaturate the rest of the photograph to ensure that that one single color pops within the scene. So let's do that with this red color here. Let's go into the effects tab We'll add a filter and we'll add the black and white filter. To target that water bucket, we'll just go into the masking options and we're gonna use a color range mask. Now because we want to target a specific red color in here, let's pull back on the color range so that we can then grab our color dropper here and we can target a specific red color within the photograph. Let's just grab this sort of red that's covering the entirety of our bucket there. And then if we view this, you can see we're targeting that specific water bucket, but in doing that, we're converting it to black and white. So let's invert it so that everywhere surrounding that water bucket is black and white, but the water bucket itself is still in color. So let's zoom in here and let's just fine tune this color range slider to bring back a little bit of that red there. And I think it's looking pretty good within the scene. One thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to view the mask here and I'm just going to clean things up with my perfect brush. So let's hit B on the keyboard and with my uh, masking brush selected, I'm gonna head up here and choose this perfect brush option. Now, because we want to remove the black and white filter from our water bucket, I'm going to modify my mode and set it to paint out. And then we can just paint away. Oops, went a little too high there. We can just paint away the white of the mask by just masking over 
the red within our watering bucket. And because the background behind our watering bucket is basically blue, it's going to have pretty a pretty easy time finding these different reds within the watering bucket there. And so it just takes a little bit of sort of fine tuning there. But you can see by just, you know, again, painting this in, you can really get that black and white look back into, or removed, sorry, from your water bucket. And remember with these fingers up here, you wanna just be really careful not to overboard with them. And then once we get inside this section here of our water bucket, oops, we actually missed this section here that I need to use for the perfect brush. But once we get inside the water bucket, you can turn off the perfect brush option. You can actually use command and R to turn that off. And then you can just use your regular masking brush and you can just paint away the black and white look from your water bucket. So there's a couple little sections here and you can see it does take, you know, just a little bit of fine tuning, but the result is super cool. And then let's view that here and we'll zoom in to sort of clean up the hand section there. So we basically just have that part right there, but the hand looks pretty good and the bucket looks pretty good. Oop, there's that section there. So let's hit B on the keyboard again and let's just get a little bit more of that section there. That shadow probably doesn't matter too much. Oh, actually it mattered a lot there. And then there's one little section there that we can paint in as well. But I think that looks pretty good. Let's get this section here on this bottom part. And so with this section right here on the front part, let's actually just turn off that perfect brush option. We'll just, oops, I bled over into that next area there. So let's turn off that perfect brush option, but let's also disable the feathering there so that we have a nice hard brush edge so that we don't bleed it over into other areas. But I think that looks pretty good. If we zoom out and we view the photograph, it's looking pretty good. You, know, you can't really tell of any of those sort of imperfections in there. And it's already making for a nice sort of popping, you know, color within the photo. So what we can do now that we've sort of just targeted that specific color within the scene is we can fine tune our black and white look. And what I would typically do in this situation is I would darken things up quite a bit. So let's just use our develop tab and we'll just darken things up sort of quite a bit. We'll add in a little bit of contrast, maybe some true white. But what we wanna do here now is just bring out the light just above the color. So let's go into our local adjustments and let's use this local adjustment to give in the scene a little bit of exposure, maybe some midtones, some contrast. We're gonna essentially just brighten this area above the water bucket. So to paint this in, we're actually gonna go into our adjustment, or our adjustable gradient rather, and we're gonna use the shape edges. With edges, as I drop this down, it's going to apply it to the center of the scene. And so let's just place this over our paint bucket here. 
Let's feather quite a bit. And with that adjustment there, just sort of popping the top part, we have a nice dark foreground, and then it looks as if the light is just really sort of just aimed at that particular section of the scene. And so if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, this is the original, and this is after by just making that one single color pop within the photo. So you can see really rewarding, does take a little bit of fine tuning sometimes just because you are you know, dealing with colors and if there's any sort of bleeding over of colors or anything like that, it's really pretty noticeable instantly to the eye. And so this is one of those instances where, again, it may take a little bit of practice, a little bit of fine tuning in there, but once you sort of get it down, the reward is, is super cool and you can create some really awesome black and white edits that way. So that was how to selectively target a specific color within your scene. Let's move on to my last tip where we talk about selectively adjusting with styles and filters. My last tip for converting images to black and white inside of Photo Raw is to selectively style with filters by painting them in or selectively applying them in specific areas of your photograph. Now it doesn't really come in handy with specific filters that you're styling with, but if you're using detail or glow or any filters like that where you're, you're incorporating detail or you're softening things up, it's really helpful to selectively apply those into different regions rather than applying them to the entirety of your image. So what I mean by that is let's, let's just talk about detail for a second. So let me just desaturate this photograph real quick. I'll desaturate it and we'll do that same method we did with the earlier edit. We'll lower the exposure quite a bit and then we'll just increase the whites to give our scene a little bit more oomph. And it looks like we need a little contrast too there. So there we go. Looking pretty good. Maybe I'll pull up on the midtones just a little bit. So we have a nice sort of moody, dramatic black and white look. But let's say we wanna add in a little bit more style to the scene, maybe some detail, maybe some glow. Well, when you're wanting to apply those into the scene, we talked about applying detail and a little bit of a, of a soft glow with these two sliders here. But remember that if I modify these sliders, I'm modifying the entirety of the photograph. And while I like the structure on the pier here, I don't really like it on the water or the clouds. So what I'd recommend doing is going in the effects tab and adding in these filters selectively. So let's add on dynamic contrast here. And we're going to use this to incorporate detail into our scene. And I'll just use surreal so it's really intense. And you can see that it looks really good within our pier there, but again, in that water and in the sky, it's just a little bit too much detail there. So let's go into our masking options. Let's invert the mask. And this way we can paint it into anywhere that we want. Well, for this photograph, I think it would look really good inside of this section here. Oops. Let me just soften up the brush edge there. But I think it would look really good in sort of the pier section here, maybe over there and there. And then I think just a hair of it would look good on these rocks there, just to sort of ground the foreground a little bit. So nothing too crazy, but what I wanna do now is just feather it up a little bit and then let's lower the opacity here. But you can see that by just painting in that detail into those specific regions of the scene, we're not giving the scene a bunch of micro contrast that may be distracting. We're only giving those little areas the style that they need. And so same thing with a glow filter. You know, detail and glow are really, really popular in black and white edits, but oftentimes they could be overused and applied to the entirety of the photo when they could look better applied selectively. So we've applied our detail selectively. Let's add another filter and let's add the glow filter. Now with the glow filter here, if I use you know a pretty intense preset, let's just use darker. If I use that preset, I really like it within the water there, but it's a little bit too dark on the pier there or the, the dock there. 
within the scene. So what we want to do is we'll just paint this away from those specific areas. To ensure they're protected. And I'll leave a little bit off of these rocks because I think it just gives a little bit more of a foreground subject. And it sort of acts as if they're popping out of that glowy water, which I think looks really nice. And so same thing, I'm going to go to my masking options. We'll just feather it a little bit. Again, this is just feathering the edges a little bit to ensure that everything blends in naturally. And then if I turn off that glow, it's working to modify the areas around sort of the detailed spots, but we get that nice subtle glow everywhere on the water and in the sky. And so you can see that by selectively applying these different styles and these different filters, you can essentially create any sort of look you'd want to within the scene rather than just having the entire photo modified like you would inside of the develop tab or you know even if we turn off these filters if I go into the black and white filter and I adjust the detail in my tone section here if I were to modify this black and white filter, you can see it's adjusting the entirety of the image there. And so if you're looking to selectively apply detail, I would recommend applying those filters individually, i.e. dynamic contrast or glow, anything like that, and then painting them into your scene. Or another way that you can apply them is by using super select AI. So if you're just looking to hover over different sections of your photograph and apply those different filters, you can hit K on your keyboard. This will allow you to hover over the different regions of the photograph. You can then select them. You could right click and then you could add on any adjustment that you'd want to that way. And so you can see just by modifying my develop tab, desaturating it in the develop tab, modifying my tone a little bit. You can see I've desaturated there and then I've modified the tone a little bit. And then I've just added on two filters, glow and detail. And let's check out our before. And then we have after. So that is selectively applying filters to your scene. Remember with detail and glow and things like that, more often than not, I think the images look better when they're selectively applied rather than being applied to the entirety of the photo. So one last thing I wanted to showcase real quick is another filter that I really enjoy using in black and white conversions to sort of just style and top everything off, and that is the curves filter. So if I add the curves filter here, within the curves filter, you can do a whole lot to adjust that black and white conversion. One thing I like to use the curves filter for is to add on a faded matte look. To incorporate a faded matte look, just grab this bottom left point. These are your blacks within the scene. We can pull up on them and you can see I'm incorporating sort of a faded matte look into the photo. If you want to fine tune that faded look, just drop a point within your shadows or your midtones, and then you can pull down to modify the amount of that fade versus the contrast of your scene. And what I've done there is I've just dropped a point down on the midtone section, sort of highlight area of my scene, and I pull that up just to boost those midtones of the photo. And that's what I'll typically do in a scene if I'm modifying the tone curve, is I'll give it a S curve, is what I like to call it. And an S curve is basically just dropping a point in your shadows, pulling it down to give your scene some contrast. And let's actually, before we do this, let's just go into the develop tab and let's just reset our tone and color. And then let's just desaturate. So you can see, you know, nothing too special about this black and white photograph, but let's go into the effects tab. 
let's add a filter and let's add the curves filter. And in the curves filter here, let's add on an S curve. So again, I'll drop a point in my shadow tones, drag those down quite a bit. With this scene, since it's quite heavily exposed, you might need to drag it down a lot. And then we'll drop a point in again our mid-tones highlights, and then watch as I pull that up a little bit. We create this sort of dramatic look within the scene, and that's all by using our tone curve there. And again, that's just an S curve because it emulates the look of an S within the photograph. So those are three filters that I really like to apply into my black and whites. The first two being dynamic contrast and glow, which I would highly recommend to selectively apply into your scene rather than applying them to the entirety of the photograph. And then the next filter is the curves filter, a really awesome filter for modifying that black and white conversion, giving your scene a bit of contrast, and then boosting the highlights or the midtones within the photo. So those are my tips for converting your images to black and white inside of On One Photo Raw. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.